today is one of those days that um, I it's like how is this my life <laughs> I'm sure we all feel that at some point or another um, I'm visiting my family in North Carolina and I had a doctor's appointment just like a yearly checkup for a few reasons when I needed one I was past time and then I also um, needing an adoption form filled out. Um, we have to do a medical every year for our adoption. And this is our third round of waiting and um, third round of paperwork anyway. Um, after we've been waiting, I guess it's going on 17 or 18 months. I don't even know. Um, but I'm actually doing this little video because I want to remember. Um, I rewatched a video I did like just a month or so after losing our son Hudson and it kind of sparked the interest in me to start doing that more again because I in that video I said um, I had not really written very much and actually since then I've written quite a lot um, and it's really hard um, but I I've just always been that person that writing is therapeutic for me and so I finally kind of gotten back to that but I also think there are some moments that I just don't think I have the capacity to get on paper. So I wanted to tell you about two of them um, now while I had a few minutes by myself. Um, I just had to go to this doctor's appointment and I knew like I'm seeing you know, a doctor I've seen before who she did not take care of me when I was pregnant with Hudson but I saw her after. And um, the main thing is that um, <laughs> This is, this is the doctor's office where they discovered that Hudson only had two chambers of the heart formed. And so, um, I've only had to go there, I think, maybe one other time since he passed away, I think. Um, and so I knew, like, yesterday and last night, like, gearing myself up to walk back in there. Um, that's just so hard and you know I'm sitting in a room with um, pregnant moms <laughs> moms to be and um, I can't help but notice them and there's was a mom there with a little boy uh, maybe two ish and then she's quite pregnant and um, you know that's where I was I was pregnant you know, I was pregnant with Hudson and Graham was um, you know, 15, 16 months old when we um, learned that Hudson was sick. And so, um, anyway, uh, I had my exam and then I came out and I just had this like overwhelming feeling of um, wanting to talk to the technician who um, was the very first person to diagnose Hudson. And I asked the lady at the counter, is there a way to look at my appointment and find out who it was and would that person still potentially work there all these years later because that would have been 2015 and it's January 2019 now and so like you know is it even possible that this person still works there and um, she thought it was the person who was on staff still there and even there today but that she would be available for like 40 minutes and I couldn't wait so I just in my tears um, <laughs> I just passed on to the receptionist to thank her because you know, I think that would be crazy to want to thank the person who tells you your baby is sick but and potentially fatally sick. Um, but I've just met some moms face to face and then also I'm um, just on like a heart mom page that they didn't know till their baby was born that they were even sick and like how overwhelming would that be that you've got a nursery ready and you've got everything ready and then you had zero knowledge that your child was going to need like intensive intensive care for years and surgery after surgery and so I think just um, I'm just so thankful even though it was horrible news to hear about our baby I'm just so thankful that I was able to 
first of all, just be prepared with that information. And I was able to read about it and talk to people about it. And, and our son was even sick further, like beyond, um, having a heart condition. And so even being able to just, um, you know, get him the care he needed because they sent us out of state as many of you know. And so, um, it just, had he been born here, he probably wouldn't have even lived. Um, I don't even know how long we would have had him. Probably like no time at all. But because we were at um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where it's very, very specialized, we had got to keep him for eight months. So I'm so thankful for every one of those days. And she was part of that journey. So I was crying. <laughs> I apologized. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to ask you a question. That's just to the receptionist that's like, you know, I'm paying for my, I'm paying my co-payment. And I really wanted to ask, but I was like, I'm going to cry. I know I'm going to cry. Um, and so I warned her. <laughs> I was like, I need to ask you something. And I choked up and I was like, but I'm probably going to cry while I ask you. Um, and so she kind of leaned in, you know, um, and she was very nice and said that she was pretty sure she knew which technician it was and she would pass on what I was wanting to convey. And, um, and I couldn't get anything out beyond that. Cause I didn't, I don't even know, like, I'm assuming that my doctor knows that Hudson passed away, but I've not, you know, I've not seen this technician. I don't obviously the reception, like, I don't know what's in my file. Does it say, Hey, watch out for this woman. She's a mom of loss. <laughs> she comes with a bag of tears. Um, I don't know what's in my file. So like, I don't know, like, does the technician know that Hudson passed away or not? But regardless, I just had that overwhelming feeling of, um, you know, just wanting to say that to her because there have been other moms who've had that same scan and they didn't catch it. And I'm not necessarily blaming a technician for that because there could be a lot of reasons it didn't show up or the baby's position or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> but I am thankful that the person who uh, took care of us and was able to discover that and we quickly went to maternal, maternal fetal medicine the next day. And then within two weeks or so we were on our way to Philadelphia. So it was like very quick and helpful that she found it when she did. And I was able to pass this to people that could take care of us and take care of Hudson. And then the other story I just wanted to kind of get, you know, recorded is that we were able to come to North Carolina for um, to kind of a post Christmas trip this year and because of Corey, um, Hudson's daddy, my husband, um, because he, his job is kind of, he's on call a lot and stuff is, so he might even have some time off, but he can't always leave the area where we live. And so, um, because of that, he has not been to North Carolina since Hudson's service, since Hudson's funeral. So that is two and a half years that he's not been down here, which what that means is he has not been in the same room with my family. Like he's not seen my parents. He's not seen my brothers or their wives or like my sister-in-law and brother had a baby this year. Like he's not met her until now. So it was just like really a special, it was post Christmas, but still Christmas time with my family because Corey was able to come. And so we were with my family for a few days and we kind of had, you know, our Christmas dinner gifts and food and just puzzles and hung out together like a normal Christmas for us and games and stuff. And then, um, we, um, on our way out of town, we were completely packed down with stuff that we were taking back with us. And, um, I asked Corey if he would like to go by Hudson's grave. And this is crazy because, again, it's just how life has played out. I come down here every few months, you know, three months, four months. You know, sometimes it's more than that. It just depends on our finances because it's expensive to go back and forth. And little Graham is in school, preschool. And, you know, so our life is there. But my family is here and this is home to me. So we do come regularly. So almost every single time I've come home, I go by Hudson's grave. I know Hudson's not there. I know he's in heaven and he's restored and he's whole and whatever. But there's just something in my heart that like I'm tugged to go over there. And so, um, 
And sometimes I go and sit there for a while, and sometimes I go and it's for two minutes. And I just tell him I love him, tell God to take care of my boy, which is crazy because I know God's taking care of him. And just sometimes I sing his song, Cornerstone, and it's just something for me. But you have to think, like, Corey hasn't had that opportunity because he hasn't been able to leave to come down here. And we've, you know, his vacation time and stuff has been used for family weddings and um, a few things like that where we haven't been able to, to come to this, you know, we haven't been able to come back to North Carolina. So, um, anyway, all that to say, this trip we stopped in and... As soon as I mentioned it, Corey just started to cry. And um, he is so different from me. I'm so verbal. Clearly, here I am blabbering on my phone. Um, but he just processes his um, grief so differently than I do. And thankfully, it hasn't separated us. I mean, we've had days where we've miscommunicated because I'm having a hard day about, you know, stuff with Hudson or you know, he's having a hard time. Like, you know, we have missed each other, but overall it's not separated us or anything. It's not pushed us apart. But I do think like, I feel, I felt that heaviness for him that day that he had not been back to the grave since Hudson was buried. And so, (laughs) um, it was so hard to see his grief. And, um, even like when Hudson was buried, we didn't have his name placard thing I don't even know what you call it (laughs) um gravestone is that the word um we didn't even have that we had it ordered but of course it wasn't there yet because it was a fresh grave and so we didn't have it down on the ground yet and so anyway um he had never seen that in person and he'd seen pictures I'd taken pictures to show him what the gravestone looked like but he had never um uh, seen it in person. So we just stood there for a few minutes and we cried and I got bitten by fire ants. Of course, something stupid happened and, um, I just kind of took it in and just said a few things that we miss him and, you know, just sad things. <laughs> and, um, I was just really glad that Corey was able to go there and be by his grave. And, um, I just, I don't know. We didn't even really talk about it a ton after just for a few minutes. And then we kind of got on our drive cause we had, we we're jumping on the road to head back home and we had, you know, 11, 12 hour drive ahead of us. And so anyway, but I wanted to get those two things where I could remember, um, that I can do these really hard things that, um, moms of loss have to go through and, um, for some people they're just going in to get their annual visit at their OB and for me it's like walking back into hell (laughs) and I could change OBs I mean clearly I could go to one where we live in Illinois um and I even did make an appointment there and then realized oh I'm gonna be in North Carolina I might as well see someone I know and I have to start all over with explaining everything so You know, I just decided that I would go back where I'm familiar, even though it's really, really hard. Um, So, um, that's that with that. But I just wanted to get those two specific things down. And I just, again, like, I don't even know what I'm going to do with them, these videos. But I just want to say, like, you know, um, it's really difficult to walk through grief no matter what kind of grief it is um and it shows up at a random doctor's appointment and it shows up at the holidays and it shows up on a random Tuesday and and it's really tough um but you know Corey and I got in the car we left our son's grave who says that I love my son's grave like who says that (laughs) people who lose their children um I never thought I would say that sentence, my son's grave. I mean, that phrase. Um, but we left there and we got in the car and we had a good ride home. We listened to some podcasts. We laughed. We were silly. Um, you know, it was fine. You know, it wasn't this, um, I think I assumed that grief would just 
you know, if you had a moment of grief, that then now the whole day is like that when it's actually not, not. And I think that's probably a really good thing because otherwise it just would, um, you wouldn't be able to do anything else if the weight of grief felt as heavy, the heaviest that the weight of grief can feel. If it stayed that heavy always, you couldn't do anything. <laughs> so thankfully, um, it comes in waves and you kind of like take it in and then keep moving and um and I know there are times that's not possible um especially when it's really really fresh um and there are days that it doesn't feel like it's a wave it feels like it's a boulder and it's sitting on top of you <laughs> so to anyone listening to this who has walked through it my heart goes out to you and I hate that that's your story <laughs> I hate that it's our story um but just know that you can walk into that doctor's office even if it's where your child was diagnosed. You can walk back into your church even though your heart feels hard towards God. And you might even hate him a little right now. <laughs> but you can go back and he's waiting and waiting, waiting for you. And you can even talk to him in your car. You don't have to go back in that building just to talk to him. You can enjoy your Christmas. Um, it's our third Christmas without Hudson and well, it's just this killer, but I can do it. And the thing is, is I had a great Christmas. I was a little sad, and I, you know, I was sad hanging Hudson's ornaments, and his stocking was there, and H and Corey even said, like, our stockings were full of stuff, and Hudson's was flat. <laughs> so stupid. We do a Hudson um, Christmas stocking thing, but by then we had already taken the stuff out and distributed it to the families, and so um, Christmas Eve... His stocking was quite flat. <laughs> Ugh, anyway, I could mumble on, but that is where I am today, and I just hope that some of our story would. I just read a quote the other day that we should tell our stories of how we climbed the mountain because it could be a page in someone else's survival guide. And I'm like, that's so good because I think that there are a few moms I've met in the last few years who they're thriving, you know, and they're six, seven, ten years out from losing their children. And, um, I look at them and I say, okay, like they have hope, they have joy. They, their countenance is not downcast. Um, and they cry and they tell me stories of how hard it is, but they also are living life. And so I just really hope that I will help other moms help you. If you're listening to this, see that life's not over. You can do this mama. And there's so much to live for. And you are so deeply loved by God. And even if you're mad at him, <laughs> he loves you so much. And so, um, I'd love to be that encouragement to you. And, um, I guess you can reach out to me anytime and I will pray for you and cry with you. All right. That's enough for now. <laughs> Bye.